di ba lahat tayo may kanya-kanya definition of success? And some people, they define it based on how much they have in their bank account. Others, they define it based on the number of businesses they have or the awards they've won or maybe the number of fans that they have. It's that full circle eh. And I think I'm getting close. One incident, nung bata ako, uh, grade 7 ako nun. Nalala ko may ano kaming parang ano eh, uh, grade school dance. And then, naghintay ako dun sa waiting shed para dun sa driver ko na dumating. So dumidilim, dumidilim. And uh, may apat na lalaki na bumaba from, from a Lancer, yung box type na Lancer. And before I knew it, dinadala na nila ako. Uh, yung isa may dalang kutsilyo. Tapos pinasok ako doon sa loob ng, ng, uh, ng kotse. And then, yung sa utak ko, parang inisip ko, itong nangyayari sa akin, feeling ko magtatapos to na lumulutang ako sa Pasig. Parang ganun talaga yung inisip ko. And yung bag ko, pinapakilaman niya. So hindi niya ako pinapansin. Nakataas yung lock. So nakita ko nakataas siya. And may hawak akong bag na, na plastic. Pag nandun ka sa situation na yun, wala ka talagang iisipin na na masamang mangyayari. Iisipin mo yung pinakamaganda na lang, di ba? Na para makalabas ka. So, giwa ko, hinampas ko yung katabi ko, yung buko siya. And then, dal malit ako at that time, um, pero mahaba din yung mga, mga limbs ko. I was able to climb over him, nabuksan ko yung door. Tapos bumagsak ako sa, sa road. Tapos tumakbo ako papunta nun sa fast food na, na branch. Pagdating ko doon, kinuha ko yung security guard. Ang nangyari, siya yung kumuha ng taxi para sa akin. And eventually, nakauwi ako. Tumapang ako, for sure. Um, tumapang ako, nagkaroon ako ng tibay ng loob na pag may ganong situation, alam kong makakaisip ako ng mabilis. And I think yun na nakatulong sa akin sa maraming mga sitwasyon na dumaan sa, sa buhay ko. It helped me build whatever character I have now. My modeling career started out with my uncle, uh, Vic Barba. He gave me that uh, that first taste, and then nung ko, that's nun, that's when I had the desire to audition. No man, na habang na sa college ka, naalala ko na sa ateneo ko nun. Tapos pag nakuha ko yung sa pager, yung pager pa kami nun, Nako sa pager na, oh, may, may VTR sa Makati. So during my four-hour break, babiyayo ko from Ateneo, although ito Makati, I'll do my VTR and then go back to school and study and then two weeks later find out na hindi ko na yung role. Some will quit after five. 200 and after the 200 I got a support role na na kapag kumidad ka ni mo makita pero happy na ako doon and then I kept on I kept on pushing it I kept on pushing it and I, I, I felt na one day one day makuha ko na niyan and then I got it I got the commercial at um naging isa ako sa mga ambassadors ng t-shirt brand na yun Habang lumipas yung ilang mga buwan, and I was getting deeper and deeper into modeling, um, I realized na there might be other opportunities within that entertainment industry. So from modeling, inalok ako na mag-host. I tried it out. And then, um, Bandang mga 19, 1996, August, uh, nakapag-audition ako sa isang show called Game Plan. Proud ako dun sa first show ko na yun because bukod sa experience, I realized some things hindi mo talaga pwede tumbasa ng pera eh. Ang bayad sa amin nun, naalala ko, 4,000 a month eh. But we were happy. We were happy doing what we were doing. 
may mga ganun eh na hindi mo alam pinapangarap mo pala until ah, nandun ka na. I was young. Bagong graduate sa college. Kailan natin maging practical. Hindi ako mabubuhay sa 4,000 a month. So, tumanggap ako ng racket na sa pagbabar tour sa probinsya. So, nangyari, ang na-sacrifice doon, yung schedule ko doon sa show. Kasi, mas maganda yung bayad dito. Sabihin natin, naging pasaway ako sa madaling salita. And, dahil doon, uh, hindi ako rin din you. It also made me realize na, wow, parang kailangan pala talaga alagaan. Sobra ako na-depressed. That was 1997. And nag-audition ako for uh, MTV to be a VJ. And sa libo-libo na nag-audition, <clears throat> pito kami napili. When the VJs came down to announce the winner, sabi niya, I know we promised to announce one, but we're gonna announce two. Nung in-announce yung winners, hindi ako yung nanalo. Ako, dumiretso ako sa dressing room. Pinawa ko yung gamit. And doon yung tatay ko sa show. Tapos sabi niya, oh, ba't di ka sumama sa gym? Hindi, I had to get my stuff. Tapos parang sabi niya, alam mo, it's a contest. People win, people lose. And then, uh, basically, sinermo na niya ako na you have to be diba, gracious in defeat. Ang thinking ko noon, wala na akong pag-asa ever on television. Kasi nawala na nga ako doon sa unang show dahil pasaway ako. Dito naman, overconfident ako, hindi ako pinili. Um, that's it. Nag-submit nag, uh, ng mga resume sa iba't ibang mga multinational companies. Nakatanggap ako ng tawag na changed my life forever. And it was a call asking me if I wanted to be a host for the Binibini Pilipinas. And this was 1998 of March. And at first, sabi ko, um, sige, when's the audition? Sabi na, no, no, hindi mo na kailangan mag-audition. Ikaw yung pinili namin dahil napanood ka. Napanood ka ng mga producers doon sa game plan. And I, I remember after that, I already got offers uh, for a morning show um, and then all of these tabloids and, and, and newspapers and magazines were talking about it. Parang, sino yun? Saan si Galing? Looking back, the few seconds bago ako lumabas ng stage was very similar to that incident when I had to run away from that car in, when I was in, 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 in grade school. Yung, yung, yung single-minded focus. Single-minded focus ko dun sa isa, tumakas. Single-minded focus ko dito, I want to do really well. I didn't think it would be that. It would actually lead to a two-decade career on television, but it did. I've had psoriasis for about 20 years. And it first came out in college when I was really stressed. And, you know, with, with psoriasis, it doesn't choose people. And I was one of those people, no? Na kapag stressed ako, lumalabas. Kapag mainit, lumalabas. Um, and yes, it did lead to insecurities. You're scratching it or you're rubbing it. You're trying to hide it. Hindi ako makapag shorts, di ba? Kasi it didn't look pleasant. It was like an open wound. It was red, it was pink, it was all colors you can think of. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, we'd like to leave an impression, like you white naman yung floor. Um, and, and ako, I, I dealt with it every single day. At yung mga tao kasi na merong gantong klaseng karamdaman, bawat gising sa umaga, kailangan ihanda yung utak, yung puso. Um, at yung katawan para sa araw. People hide it. And for the longest time, I, I hid it. That was a physical insecurity. But it's different eh. Iba. I mean, the, the modeling was fine, but then the moment I hit showbiz and television and 
you know, your, your popularity just goes, it was crazy. It was crazy. And I don't think I was mature enough to handle it. Hindi pa ako ready doon sa magiging reception ng tao na kahit saan ka pumunta, kilala ka, tatawagin ang pangalan ng show mo, uh, tatawagin ang pangalan mo. That, that made me a household name. And the money just kept coming in, um, endorsements, iba't ibang mga commercial, ginagawa ko noon, the big brands, name it. You try to maintain a certain lifestyle. So I started buying the fancy cars, I started buying the really nice you know, condo units, the houses, and investing in businesses, not even understanding what it was. Hindi ako ready dun sa, sa fame, sa whatever fortune na dumating. Hindi ako ready sa, sa kung anong maging epekto sa akin bilang tao. Kung work ethic, walang masasabi sa akin in terms of how hard I would work. And I had a lot of pride in what I did. But I was also very, very stubborn. Na minsan, pag alam ko kung anong gusto ko, pag hindi ko nakuha, nag-ano ko, nag-spoil nag brat ako. It does something eh. Showbiz does something to your head. May, may nangyayari dito mali eh. Na parang you end up treating people a certain way na pag pinag-isipan mo, parang, parang mali yun. But it's too late. Nasaktan na sila. Alam mo yung start ng downfall ng kahit sino tao? When they believe the hype about themselves. And I read and I believe the hype. Di ba? Na I'm this, I'm that. I was getting all the awards. Name it. I got it. Di ba? It only means that you know, uh, popularity and fame can change a person. I wasn't a bad person, but I knew na, especially now looking back, I was far removed from who my parents raised me to be. Yung material, um, shinut yung material 2010. Okay. A few months after, pinaayos ko yung device. Hardware lang dapat. Pagbalik sa akin, naka-disable na yung password. Kinutuban na ako nun. And just like anything in your life, kapag kinut pag may kutub ka, something's up. Trust your instinct. I didn't know what was gonna happen, but bagong paso ako sa TV5 nun. So, cut a long story short, when I got the letter na snail mail, okay, nagra-radio ako nun eh. Binigay sa akin ng PAs, binuksan ko, tapos pagbukas ko may screen caps. Tapos nandun na, nandun na yung message. And um, essentially, they were asking for 3 million. Kundi ilalabas daw nila. So this was... This was 2010. Um, ang unang instinct ko, tahimik lang. Kasi pag pinansin ko to, baka lumaki. Baka maraming mag-pick up, di ba? So sabi ko, hindi, hindi ko muna pinansin. So, during the course of that, until it finally came out, ganun ako mabuhay. Sa umaga, nagdarasal ako, sana hindi, Lord, it's sana hindi ito yung araw na lalabas. Matulog ko sa gabi, Lord, sana hindi bukas lalabas. Ganon, every single day, for four and a half years, yun ang prayer ko. Then, July 27, 2014, I wake up, it's a Sunday, ordinary day, decided to sleep long, Woke up at 11 a.m., pagtingin ko sa cellphone ko, 2,000 missed calls. Pagtingin ko sa laptop, at that time, ang dami pang pwedeng friend request eh. 13,000 friend requests. 
Pagkita ko sa messages, probably, I don't remember, just three, five or four thousand messages. Something was wrong. I knew it. And, biglang nang lamig yung buong katawan ko. And I didn't want to look. I didn't want to look. I didn't want to open. I didn't want to. Pero, minsan may, may morbid curiosity tayo eh. So I clicked it. Lahat ng newsfeed ng lahat ng tao, they were, they were sharing it. They were criticizing me. They were judging me. I built a career over nearly two decades. Two decades, can you imagine? And then in a few minutes, few minutes lang, it was gone. Kung anumang goodwill ang naipundar mo sa industriya, pakinandam ko nun na baliwala lahat dahil sa kagagawan ko. Hindi ko lang gagawin ko. Um, and, you know, I, I, I remember, minessage ko na lang yung family ko isa-isa para lang alam nila, I'm okay. They wanted to see if pwede ba sila bumisita, sa ko muna. So that was Sunday. Monday, may newscast ako. Well, I already assumed na siyempre, I'm sure nakita nila, di ba? So, Monday, pumasok ako sa news. And pagpasok ko sa newsroom, hindi ko mapig mapigilang umiyak. Kasi lahat ng staff, producers, cameramen, audio men, nagsilapitan, and then they were, they were hugging me. And they were saying, okay lang yan, Pao. Okay lang yan. Um, you'll get through this. Dito lang kami. Diba? And I, I felt na, okay. I can do this. I can do this with the support of everyone around me. But, you know, ang social media talaga, kaya nga sabi nila, ang hirap pigilan eh. Kasi, andun yung bilis, andun yung dami, andun yung iba't ibang klase na pwede. So, within the next two weeks of me going back to work, naging meme na ako, Ang dami, ang dami, ang daming, ang daming masasakit na mga salita, pag-uhusga. Basta mga ayaw mong basahin ng mga magulang mo, pero alam mo na babasa nila. At alam mo na babasa yung puso nila. And there's no way for you to stop it. I think yun ang pinamasakit para sa akin. Na hindi mo mapigilan ang pagkalat ng isang bagay na walang pwedeng sisihin kundi sarili mo. I mean, how old was I then, di ba? I mean, shouldn't I have known better? And doon na pumasok yung self-doubt na siguro nangyayari ito dahil masama akong tao. Siguro nangyayari ito dahil naging naging arrogant ako or naging naging uh, uh, lumaki ulo ko or or lahat 'yon pupasok sa utak mo di ba na parang bakit ito yung parusa sa akin bakit ito yung dahilan kung bakit nangyayari to para ipaalam sa akin na oy yung mga kasalanan mo na nakaraan eto na it's payback time And I didn't want to stay in an industry where I felt, A, I didn't deserve to be in anymore. B, the people who are making the decisions felt that maybe I wasn't ready. I don't think I'm fit for, I'm fit for television anymore. It's not gonna work. I decided to really just step away and accept. And that's when yung true fear set in eh. Kasi, you've done this all your life, 
And when that's taken away from you, <laughs> mind-boggling yan. Kasi saan ako babagsak? Di ba? And the only way the healing process can begin is when you start to learn how to forgive yourself. When you start to forgive yourself and realize and understand that people make mistakes and you just made a mistake, and if you want to continue living, you have, you have to stop blaming yourself because it's done. Tapos ne. Next step in the healing process, you forgive others. So lahat ng negative na nabasa ko, naaalala ko yung meme na ginawa sa akin, I just forgave them. And then I learned the art of letting go. And when I say letting go, it's more of stop chasing. All my life, almost two decades in showbiz, always chasing. Chasing for that big contract, chasing for that next endorsement, chasing for that multi-million peso deal, chasing for that popularity. And um, I stopped chasing. I stopped chasing. It's a hard process. You, you, but, you know, I learned how to stop procrastinating. So, you want to heal? You have to make a decision like that. You just think of what you want to do, and then you go three, two, one, and do it. Para sa iba pang balita at impormasyon, mag-subscribe lang sa news5.com.ph. We're always on!